Welcome back to Central PA Live. Well, as you know, we always love having Chef Janet here, but today we went grocery shopping together and got all of these ingredients for this Reuben that you're going to be making now. This Reuben isn't your typical Reuben, is it, Chef Janet? No, it is not. Uh, I like to use the rye bread. I like to use the fresh corned beef. I like to use Swiss cheese, which you call the church cheese because yep, it's, it's holy. holy. <laughs> okay. And then Thousand Island dressing, that just depends on if you like it. You said you like the Thousand I Island. Love it. Yep. I don't incorporate the slaw or the kraut. Uh, I prefer to use bacon. Of course, I like bacon on everything. <laughs> and I prefer to put avocado on there. So it makes it a really good flavor with the corned beef, the Swiss cheese, the bacon, and the avocado. And what's so nice about this is I've got this flat top grill here, and my brother-in-law gave me this, and I just love it. And you can get your bacon on here, your corned beef, yeah. your cheese, if you want to grill your avocado, if you want to toast your bread. I've never heard of a grilled avocado. Yeah, and then what you can do is you can set all this up on your grill and then just have your guests build their own. It's, How much fun! It's, it's so much fun. And I, what I love most is that you're leaving the sauerkraut and stuff out because I, I personally I don't love that oh, stuff. Oh, we don't out. need that stuff. That's, that's like so, out of the garden. That's uh, 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 <laughs> I'm not a rabbit. So here, let's assemble you a sandwich, Alex. I'm not a rabbit. I'm not a rabbit. Oh, so right. let's put some Thousand Island dressing on there. Okay. And let's put some corned beef. You know, the hometown market was so nice. Oh my gosh, they were today. They, they were so friendly, and they 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 bought our groceries for us. By they the way. did eight pounds of butter. <laughs> You bought. I can't I believe bought. it. Chef All Janet's right. in the house. They know that they're going to be out of butter. Butter I hope and bacon. They called the people and told them to bring more butter. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is going to be so yumpster dumpster. Oh my God, wow. I'm loving this. All right, now. And you can grill or toast your bread off if you want to. Okay. Of course, I like to cut everything corner to corner. Okay, and you're going to have some really good flavor in here. Oh, uh, like I always say, it's a party in your mail. All right, Alex, try half okay, of it. Okay, well, before I even take a bite, I just want to open that up and just show everybody yeah. how delicious that looks on the inside. All because stacked in there. It's just absolutely Corn mouth Corned beef, Swiss cheese, your Thousand Island dressing, your bacon that's real crisp, and your avocado, which is healthy right. for you. Well, you know what I love about all of your recipes, Chef Janet, is they're always simple and affordable because that, those are the two things everybody needs, needs in their life. A lot of these, especially, our, our, you know, our, a lot of our friends at home have kids or grandkids, and they're they're in a rush, and they don't have, you know, you can always you can always save a few bucks. So let's go ahead and give this a, a taste. What do you say? Mm -hmm. Here about the other half. No, I'm good. I yeah. had cookies. You fed me cookies at the market yeah. raisin Cookie, field. They were. I was. I was a little skeptical to begin with. They were actually really good. I told you. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't steer you wrong. Wow. Mmm. Yum. Mmm-hmm. Yeah, I love corn beef. That is fantastic. Love it. Mm -mm -mm. Well, Chef Janet, why don't you tell everybody really quick about Sip and Saute and how they can get a hold of you? 814-515-1191. Uh, you can give me a call and I'll call you back. Uh, <laughs> and you can give me a call and I will come out and do a cooking demonstration for you and your friends in your home. I'll cook a dinner party, hors d'oeuvres, breakfast, appetizer, holiday food, or just if you want to hire me for entertainment. Well. I'll do that too. <laughs> yeah, entertainment you are and that's why we keep having you back. I can't thank you enough for being here and for going grocery shopping. That was a lot of oh, fun. Oh, I had fun. Of Anytime. Course, I can't recipe... probably step foot in that store again, but that's all right. Me either. We got, <laughs> we got kicked out. No, we didn't. Uh, th this recipe and of all of our recipes, of course, are always on our website, which is centralpatv.com. And that's about going to do it for today's show. Thank you so much for joining us. We hope you had as much fun as we did. Coming up tomorrow on the show, we'll have Miss Universal on the show to make red pepper relish. What do you think of that? Oh, sounds it's, good. It's going to be so good. That's all for now. Good night, Cook everybody. Good my friends. <laughs>
live from WTAJ, your news leader. This is your news before five. Good afternoon. Thanks for watching. I'm John Clay with your news before five. A local band's playing all the right notes, marching their way to the nation's capital. Mark time! Mark! It's the Bald Eagle Area Marching Band, and most of the members in the band have been playing for years. Now, they're going to be on the national stage, one of just a couple throughout the country to be chosen to be part of the National Independence Day Parade. Members say they're excited to be there, representing not only the community, but the state. It's like really exciting because then the whole country does get to see you and you get your school out there like, huh, who is the school? This is really big for us. It's an honor for all of us. Now, if you can't make it to D.C., you can watch this online. And for a link, head over to our website, wearecentralpa.com. While most kids are sleeping in, playing video games, and hanging out with friends, some students in the area were showing off their smarts in the National Technology Student Association Conference. Today, Richland School District announced three students, Cassidy Orr, uh, Addy Shridhar, uh, uh, and Caitlin Yeager, placing first in the nation in the on-demand video event. During the convention, they had to shoot, write, and edit a video that you're watching here for a competition. And uh, we all here at WTAJ want to say, Congratulations. A new app could help parents interpret why their baby's upset based on how they're crying. The free app, Chatter Baby, was released last month. It analyzes the acoustic features of a baby's cry to help parents understand whether their child may be hungry, fussy, or in pain. We're taking a five second audio sample. We look at over 6,000 different acoustic features and we try to see which features are associated with each state using artificial intelligence. Why some doctors are saying to use technology with a grain of salt. That's ahead at 5.30. We want to honor another dad during our annual Dad a Day contest. Take a look at Brandon Leeper and his son submitted by Andrea Leeper. Brandon's a special father because his son says, quote, he plays with me and takes me to Dunkin' Donuts. Thanks, Andrea. If you'd like to submit a picture of your dad or husband, head over to wearecentralpa.com. Look for the contest page for the Dad a Day logo. Still ahead, the latest in the Franken food trend. First, here's a look into Blair County, courtesy of our Fiori, Toyota, Volkswagen, Audi, Skynet camera. This is your news before five. Well, Mike, it, you know, uh, certainly a humidity factor out there. I can yes. feel a little bit mm -hmm. more creeping in, and we're expecting more of a heat wave coming our way. Huh? Uh, yeah, it really kind of starts Friday into this weekend. Our dew points are already high. We're going to add some uh, even hot temperatures or hot air mm -hmm. for this upcoming weekend. Today, not too bad. Enjoy what we have outside. 79 degrees right now. We'll add about, see, a 10 to 15 degrees more 
really starting Friday through the weekend and also for the first half of next week. So not just one or two days of excessive heat, but also uh, four to five days of excessive heat is heading our way. So let's enjoy these upper 70s right now. 79 degrees in Altoona, Indiana at 79, Johnstown 72, Somerset at 72 degrees for this afternoon. And like uh, John mentioned, it's quite humid outside. Our dew point temperatures are on the higher side, upper 60s to 70s, and these temperatures will climb with our air temperatures as well. So here's a dew point trend, mid 60s for Friday and Saturday. So we'll feel, feel humid outside. Then Sunday, Monday and Tuesday, we turn the notch up another degree. So upper 60s to low to mid 70s for our dew point trend. So it, it will feel very humid, muggy and sticky outside Sunday, Monday and Tuesday. Here's a look at our current uh, Doppler. Not much rain outside right now, which is good. We did see a few showers out towards Harrisburg and we had some showers this morning. We're drying out high pressures building its way in right now and we're going to see plenty of sunshine throughout the rest of this evening. Again, you can see the clouds clearing out towards the south and southeast and a bit of thunderstorm activity out towards Scranton. That was stay out there. We're kind of done with the rain for well, a few days for tonight. I do believe tonight will be the last really cool night where we can leave the windows open to cool our houses down. Our lows in the upper 50s to 60s, Altoona at 60, Indiana 58, Johnstown 58. And from here on out, uh, Friday night through the weekend or overnight lows, not much relief, upper 60s to the low to mid 70s. So a warm night, warm nights to come. High pressure just towards our west that will move in and kind of just stay with us for the next several days. And that's why we're going to see well, a lot of sunshine. That's nice, but we're going to turn quite hot and humid. We're going to tap into some very humid and hot air towards the south. And that will get thrown our way really starting tomorrow, lasting through the weekend. And like I mentioned earlier, the first half of next week. So high pressure slides off towards the east and kind of just parks over um, the Carolinas and just east of the Carolinas. And we'll see a lot of extra humidity and some excessive heat stay with us throughout the weekend and also Monday and Tuesday. So the next four days, here's what we do expect Friday. Our highs very warm, upper 80s. A few cities may see 90. But then this weekend, a lot of our cities will see the low to mid 90s, 92 degrees on Saturday, 94 degrees on Sunday, and then even Monday at 94 degrees. A little bit more cloud cover, maybe a stray shower thunderstorm for Monday afternoon. I think most will stay dry, but you see we're going to see the mid 90s uh, this weekend, Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday in the last stretch of Temperature is either at or above 90. Hmm. It's back in August of 2016, so that's two years ago. And of course, we're gonna be here, and it's just gonna be here for the next four or five days. Yeah, and we'll give you some tips ahead on how to handle some of that heat. Yes, yeah, very important. Stay hydrated, stay cool. Right yeah, there. all right. We'll be back after a break. This is your news before five. Well, just in time for July 4th, Dunkin' Donuts is introducing a new creation called Donut Fries. They're crispy pieces of dough dusted with cinnamon and sugar, served in a box just like French fries. 
A company said this week they're going to go on sale for a limited time at participating locations starting Monday. The latest in a trend of so-called Franken foods at fast food chains, quirky creations meant to drum up interest and boost sales. It follows gimmick foods like Taco Bell's Nacho Fries and Burger King's Whopperito, a burger in a tortilla. Certainly, I'm sure it'll stick around if it's successful. Thanks for watching. WTAJ News at 5 is up next. Before we go, a look at what you can expect in your ahead uh, in your five opener. Teeing off for a good cause, how golfers are helping Special Olympic athletes. A new law hopes to give people with a decade-old record a fresh start. I want to make sure that we know we're, we are doing everything we can. Celebrating a year of protecting pets, what you need to remember about Libre's law ahead. But first, a check on your forecast. Park Home presents Forecast First from WTAJ. Thanks for joining us. I'm Chief Meteorologist Joe Murgo. We did have a couple of showers and sprinkles around for a time today. Really, it wasn't that bad of a day. Doppler is clear right now, and tonight's going to be a pretty nice night. It will become mostly clear by 10 o'clock this evening. We're going to be in the 60s, so pleasant. And later on tonight, uh, we'll clear on out. Sunshine refreshing early tomorrow morning, but warming up by lunchtime. The beginning of a very warm, the hot weather pattern. Details coming up. WTAJ News at 5 starts now. Live from your news leader, this is WTAJ News at 5. We've got some breaking news out of Maryland right now. An active shooter situation at the Capitol Gazette, the newspaper in Annapolis. According to police, several people are dead. Many others are injured. Now, there is a suspect in custody, but a motive hasn't been released yet. The shooting happened right around 3.30 this afternoon. The Capitol Gazette's owned by the Baltimore Sun. Details still unfolding right now. We'll update you as we get more. Well, thanks for watching. I'm John Clay. Today certainly started out comfortable, but by tomorrow we're going to be right down hot. A heat wave is in the forecast. Let's uh, get you covered here, get you informed and safe this weekend. For more on the forecast, uh, here's our Chief Meteorologist, Joe Murray. Joe? Yeah, John, we're going to start to feel it really not too much for tomorrow, but it is going to get there as we head on into the weekend. Let's go ahead and take a look at the temperature trend for the next five days and you see temperatures tomorrow in the 80s. The humidity not too bad tomorrow, a little better than even today, but when you get in the upper 80s and that sun, it's going to feel very warm. The real heat kicks in. As we head through the weekend, look at this 92 on Saturday, 94 on Sunday, 94 on Monday and the nights muggy too. So not much relief there and that humidity will come on up. Our heat threat index, which takes into account both this number. I don't like to use a feels like temperature because it's not going to. That's not really scientific, but I will tell you the higher the number, the more dangerous it is. And we start to get in that dangerous category all the way through the weekend and into the early part of next week. So you want to keep that in mind as that heat is going to be uh, taking a toll. You may want to take it easy during the real heat of the day. We did have a couple of sprinkles and light showers around for today, but most of that if not all of us shifting on out, the sky's clearing on out. Very comfortable right now. Temperatures in the 70s to near the 80 degree mark. Later tonight, we will turn out to be clear. It will be more comfortable than last night. Lows in the 50s to near the 60 degree mark. Again, tomorrow very warm. We really feel the heat as we head through the weekend. We'll talk more about that in more detail coming up with your seven day forecast in a few minutes. Thanks, Joe. So we know the heat's coming. How do you say stay safe? Well, for that, we check in with our Charlotte Ames. Charlotte? John, a local emergency doctor is gearing up for the coming heat wave because when the temperatures rise, they see a lot of heat related illnesses at Mount Nittany Medical Center. The lucky ones walk in the door and those more severely affected are brought in by ambulance. What we worry about mostly are the very young and the very old. Um, in between, most people know enough to get out of the heat or how to start drinking fluids quickly enough. Emergency doctor uh, Jeffrey Elias says the bodies of the very old don't regulate heat as well and their ability to dissipate it can be affected by the medications they take. They may not realize they're overheating until it's too late. Different physical characteristics place the youngest at high risk. Most of their surface area, especially the younger ones, are mostly in the top half of their body with their heads. Um, so if they're covered, if their heads are covered, especially they're going to have a really hard time dissipating that heat. And they may just present with fast breathing. Um, they may just feel really warm to the touch and dry. So Dr. Elias urges that we keep a closer watch on both age groups. 
Now, how do you know if you're doing okay? Dr. Elias says if you're drinking enough that you feel comfortable, you're probably doing okay. Live in Altoona, Charlotte Ames, WTAJ News. Thanks, Charlotte. Several places across the region are on standby in case of emergency this weekend. That means a, in case of a power outage, they'll open up as some cooling centers. There's a list of locations to be released uh, should an emergency re arise, so stay tuned to us here. A new study finds that Pennsylvania is one of several states that have been dramatically underestimating the number of opioid overdose deaths. Researchers from the University of Pittsburgh looked at death data from 1999 through 2015, saying that Pennsylvania is one of five states where more than 35% of overdose deaths were coded as unspecified. The study estimates 70,000 opioid-related deaths went unreported due to these incomplete death certificates. In Huntington County, a pastor is facing charges after officials say that he failed to protect a teen from sexual abuse. We're learning this afternoon, the alleged abuse took place between a father and his children in 2007. State troopers say Pastor David Fisher was told that a 14-year-old girl was being abused but never reported it. Fisher was working at a church in Logan Township, Huntington County at the time. He's facing endangering the welfare of children charges. The State College Police Department needs your help to track down a suspect accused of using counterfeit bills. Take a look. This is who they are searching for. Officials say back in the 22nd, he used counterfeit money at the Walmart on Benner Pike, then drove off in a dark colored vehicle, believed to be a Honda Accord with damage in a partially open trunk. He's got black hair and a goatee there. If you have any information, please contact police. A new law will help people with criminal past get a second chance. Governor Tom Wolf signed the Clean Slate bill into law today. It seals the criminal records of people convicted of certain low-level misdemeanors if the person's gone 10 years without another arrest. Police will have access to the records. Officials say that almost a third of Pennsylvanians have some kind of criminal record, which can impact their ability to get a job or housing for decades after their sentence has been served people can make a change. They make a change for themselves. They make a change a lot of times when they have a family. They have children depending on them. That's what's important to them. They want a good life. This will allow 10 years doing what you should be doing. We're going to give you a second chance. Both sides of the aisle, strong supporters of the bill. Governor Tom Wolf thanked his Republican opponent in the upcoming election, Scott Wagner, because he was a prime sponsor of the Clean Slate Law in the Senate. A state fund that provides scholarships and grants to the children of incarcerated parents will now benefit kids that lost parents in violent crimes. Legislation to expand the First Chance Trust Fund was included in the budget bill. The fund was created last year to provide scholarships and other programs for students who live in areas with statistically higher or high school dropout rates, incarceration rates, and high crime rates. Representative Ron Marsico, who penned the amendment, said that children who are victims of violent crimes or lost their parents as a result of a violent crime deserve just as much attention and assistance. Well, it was one year ago when to Governor Tom Wolf signed into law the most comprehensive animal protection measures in the state's history. Well, today, a celebration of the anniversary of Libre's Law held at the state capitol. Our Matt Heckel reports. Yeah, well, Libre's law was named for that Boston Terrier who sparked outrage across the globe when he was left for dead in Lancaster County. He was found two years ago at a farm there, emaciated and severely dehydrated with a serious skin condition. Now, he was nursed back to health, and today, Libre was on hand for a celebration of the one-year anniversary of the law that he inspired. Yeah, he even got to eat some cake, too. That law increases penalties for animal abuse, adds protections for horses in the state, and grants civil immunity to vets and humane society officers from frivolous lawsuits when reporting animal cruelty. PA was one of only three states without a tough law toward animal cruelty before Libre's law. Now, Governor Wolf says he wants to build on that, pointing to other bills under consideration, like a bill that's already passed the House and is now in the Senate that would spell out how people can legally rescue a cat or dog from a hot car. I want to make sure that we know we're, we are doing everything we can and we should to keep making sure Pennsylvania is in line with other states uh, in terms of how we punish uh, and how we view animal abuse. Uh, I am proud to have signed this bill. I think it's a great thing for, for Pennsylvania. It's a great thing for all of us. 
And Libre's law also imposes a number of rules on tethering, including not being allowed to tether your dog outside for more than 30 minutes when it's above 90 degrees or below 32. In Harrisburg, I'm Matt Heckel, WTHA News. Certainly will affect us here in the next few days. Well, for the first time in seven years, Cambria County has some extra money to spare. Their county's independent audit results have just been released. Since 2016, county officials have paid off $8.6 million in debt. Now they've got about an $800,000 surplus in the general fund. They credit the success, the proper budgeting and cutting costs. We weren't overestimating revenues. We weren't underestimating uh, expenses so that we were dealing with real numbers. The county still has a $48 million long-term debt to pay off. They expect the number to drop by to about $36 million by the end of 2019. In the wake of yesterday's U.S. Supreme Court ruling in the case of Janice versus Asks Me, which is the American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees, Democratic lawmakers say they all introduced new legislation to protect trade unions. Washington correspondent Morgan Wright reports lawmakers want to protect unions and workers from what they fear will be future assaults by the courts. In a 5-4 to four decision, the Supreme Court ruled government employees cannot be forced to pay union dues even if they work in a unionized workplace and benefit from union protections. Democrats call it a blow to organized labor. It hurts public sector union employees because they're not as effective as they could be when they go to negotiate. Senate Democratic leader Chuck Schumer and, uh, says the ruling hurts public sector employees like teachers, nurses and police officers and many other industries. It's a gut punch to income equality. It's a gut punch to 50 years of progress. It's a despicable decision. Mark Janis, the plaintiff in the Supreme Court case, says critics who think this decision is a blow to unions is nonsense. Because they will still have the right to collective bargaining. They will still have to contact members, or I should say uh, people, to decide whether to join or not. Um, in the federal government, they're not mandated to pay fees, and they're 